This is a piece of white oak. In this video we look at white oak's identifying features along its face grain, end grain and edge grain. White oak grows in temperate climate. Temperate climates have seasons. The seasonal changes in moisture and temperature produce annular growth rings that are visible on the end grain. White oak is a ring porous species. These vessel elements that are smaller in uh, the fall and winter and larger at, uh, at the spring and uh, during it, the tree's growth spurs, these annular rings and these vessel elements form a pattern, continue on the face grain and form these V-shaped or cathedral-shaped faint lines on the face grain of the wood that are somewhat, somewhat visible. Well, this part is clearly visible there. Red oak is also an open grain species. That means that these vessel elements that are produced in, especially in the spring, the largest vessel elements, when they are on the surface, they have depth to them. They are torn open on the surface. This is smooth. This is 600 grit smooth, but the open vessel elements are visible on the surface and dirt can accumulate in these open vessel elements. Let's pick another spot there. So that's what's meant by open grain. Everywhere on the face grain throughout. These vessel elements, the largest ones that are open, they have membranes that are visible in them. Let's just pick a good spot. They are cross membranes in them along their entire length, multiple cross membranes, especially I'm looking at here in the middle that you can see some cross membranes in them there. Let's pick another spot, something along the edge there. Yeah, the vessel elements have cross membranes. This feature, that these cross membranes, show up of course on the end grain as well. The pores of the wood, some of them, most of them will be closed, but some of them will be open. We're looking at pinholes such as those ones there in the largest vessel elements. The largest vessel elements form these white bends and if you look at it carefully many of them are open but many of them are not clogged with sawdust but are showing the membranes across the vessel element. So that's, what, uh, that's why only some of them are open. So consequently unlike red oak through which you can blow water or suck water up from a cup of water uh, it, it doesn't work you can't do that with white oak white oak is not a single species as well it's a group of species and uh, they all have this same uh, structure of wood and and the same type of vessel elements that have membranes in them and in many of these these white circles, those would be the membranes that you're seeing. And I'll post a list of the species that are all in the white oak group. Another notable feature on white oak, and uh, this is also how you can tell white oak from red oak, is the rays. The ray cells, when they hit the face green, or come out to the face green, they form long lines. Let me just try to reposition uh, let's make a shadow see if it's a little better this way yeah the ray cells are long brown streaks usually the length of these brown streaks are all longer than a fingers width and I just I don't have special hands just longer than a fingers width typically so uh, whereas in red oak the ray streaks are short. On white oak these ray streaks are long and some of them they don't run the entire length of the board but some of them are I don't know two three inches long. Here is this one let's pick this one. It starts there and it ends there. That's about an inch and a half. Okay I'm sure you can find longer ones if you keep looking. Here is this one 
this one starts there and okay that ends there and it starts there and that's a long one that's almost almost two inches long okay so that's how the rays look like on face grain on edge grain the rays have this smeary appearance what you see these marbled or smeared looks that's the ray cells coming out on the edge grain let me just move back to the shade here sorry there this is how the rays look like on the edge grain there brown streaks you can also see on the edge grain here the open grain in the spring wood the largest vessel elements are open on edge grain as well not only on face grain let's take a look at the other oh very nice here huge ray uh, huge rays are coming out at the, at the side here and these rays have this smeary or marbled appearance depending on how light hits it if I just rotate it a little bit it's less pronounced or more pronounced moving back to direct light again these ray smears or ray flecks appear differently white oak like red oak is sensitive to discoloration that was a staple there and the staple got pulled or a, or a nail an iron staple or a, you know steel and the iron deposits from the steel discolor and stain the wood just like so when it's not coming out it doesn't wash out it's pretty much bonded there or cured into it it's it's not coming out of it because the vessel elements on white oak have these cross membranes let me see on this shot yeah you can see the many many little pinholes but uh, there are also many vessel elements with membranes white oak is more resistant to mold and mildew and taking up moisture than red oak whereas in red oak these all of the vessel elements are wide open so red oak is extremely susceptible to rot and damage by water white oak is less so the last item is on the edge grain that's visible the rays of course the ray cells continue on the end grain and how they look on the end grain is quite spectacular these long brown lines running this way okay those are the ray cells so the growth rings let me just stand it up on this table yeah the growth rings run this way and uh, they are uh, arching and curving in that direction but the but the rays are running in this direction on this particular specimen and uh, there okay so those would be long narrow ray cells transporting nutrients when uh, this is how the tree grew this is the end grain this would be a stump and they are transporting nutrients from the pith towards the cambium towards the outer bark of the tree so those are all the rays running in this direction all right i'm gonna have some microscopic shots on the end grain showing spring wood late wood and the ray cells